Welcome to the Cinnabar. Now today we're going to be shooting a high-tech, advanced, innovative firearm. At least it was when it was designed nearly 170 years ago. You see, today we're going to be test firing this beautiful mint condition Civil War era Smith carbine. And it's got some really interesting design features. Let's check it out. This is my first test fire with this particular firearm. And yes, it is a cartridge gun with a percussion cap. <laughs> what a wonderful old gun. Let's see if it hit. They have a real reputation for shooting high, so I was shooting right at the base of the target. Well, what do you know? Look at that. Now, we're only at about 25 yards from the target, but uh, really wasn't expecting a bullseye on the first round, so that, that's encouraging. Let's go back and take a little closer look at this innovative design, and then we'll do a little more shooting with this old girl. Looks like she's going to shoot right where we want her. Now, check out this beautiful beautiful old carbine. It's just about as close to brand new as you can get. And from everything I can tell, it was manufactured in 1863. So to have survived in this condition is just really amazing. If You, you can see the, the color case hardening is still rich and vibrant. The wood is just in terrific condition and never been refinished. You can tell that it hasn't been sanded because our, our military inspector's cartouche is just as uh, fresh and bright and, and sharp vivid edges um, we've got another uh, initial cartouche here inspectors mark here um, the barrel bluing is fantastic this spring on on top that, that holds the action together uh, kind of a fire blue rich fire blue is near perfect fire blue on all the screws yet just fantastic condition for a firearm of this age now the 1850s were a time of real innovation and advancement in firearms design and in cartridge design as well. This is a time when now most of our bores were rifled. We were seeing a lot of experimentation with, with breech loading uh, firearms, with self-contained cartridges, and that's kind of where this, this Smith carbine was born. It was started being designed by, by Gilbert Smith in the early 1850s. Um, kind of made it, uh, um, a lot of improvements on it through the, the late 1850s, I think it was 57 or 58. He, he won a, uh, a military trials with this thing, got a military contract. Uh, so this, this at the time was, was really uh, an interesting evolution in firearms design. Unfortunately, it's one of those that was maybe very innovative at the time, but was kind of a dead end, both in time in terms of the firearm itself and and the cartridge that it used. Now these used a, at the time a a kind of a rubber uh, cartridge case, a self-contained cartridge case. The reproductions like this one now are, are made out of nylon and a little a better, better quality than those early rubber cartridges. But it was just basically a, a cartridge cup with a with a, a flash hole in the end. Um, and and as things went on during the Civil War, they experimented with several different types of, of uh, material for the for these cartridges. But the real innovation with this one is it, it's breech loading design, and it's completely different than than virtually all the other breech loaders of the time. And that this one just pivots in the middle. You see, we've got this this large spring on top with a with a hole in it, and then a block on both sides of that pivot point that that spring holds together. So we've got a, a trigger here, and then we've got another little arm here that pushes up on that spring. Let's see if I can do it and we just open up into a 90 degree right here. And of course that opens up and gives us access for our, our self-contained cartridge to go in, but you'll notice it doesn't go all the way in. And that's another innovation here. This actually has a split chamber. Only part of the chamber is in the barrel itself. The other part of the chamber is back here in the receiver. So that's a design that I don't believe um, 
was carried on by any other firearms, and correct me if I'm wrong, but that was kind of a dead end. The cartridge, of course, was kind of a dead end as well, but they, they actually, during the, the early stages of the Civil War, this was a very popular carbine among the uh, cavalry units, and, and many, many regiments of cavalry were, were issued these. There was about 30,000 of them issued during the Civil War. Uh, the, uh, they were probably as, as popular as any, or even more popular, most popular among the Union troops at the beginning of the Civil War. But as the war went on, uh, some of the other carbine designs became more popular with the troops, especially the, the Spencer carbines, the um, Sharps carbines, and then again, the, the Burnside carbines even, even passed them up. Now, the, the Burnside and the Spencer both had uh, uh, metallic cartridges. The Sharps, of course, had a paper cartridge at that time. One of the issues that the cavalrymen had with, with this particular uh, firearm was that these, these rubber cartridges would, would expand and, and kind of sort of melt a little bit. We don't have that problem with these. And then they were really hard to extract. And you can imagine if you're in battle and under fire, how frustrating that might be. The other issue they had with them was the cavalry troops when they were fighting mounted, it was it took two hands to break these things down and you're trying to hold the horse's reins and, and, and grab these in, in different ways and, and keep the, the horse under control as you were fishing out um, ammunition. They also were encouraged to keep their their used cartridges so that they could reload them. And of course, when you're under under battle conditions, I imagine most of them just got tossed and another one grabbed. But very innovative, very interesting and, and pretty, pretty uh, little firearm here. Let's go ahead and, and do a little more shooting with it. We'll go down to the shop here for, for just a little bit too and, and show you just exactly how easy it is to load these cartridges. Now this is my first time loading these Smith carbine cartridges. And while I did run into a couple of issues, overall it's pretty simple stuff and my kind of precision loading. Now hopefully I don't get crossed up with YouTube's policy against showing ammunition manufacturing, but of course this is more of a historical demonstration because ammunition hasn't been uh, loaded this way since the Civil War. Now here's one of these nylon cartridge cases that during the Civil War would have been a kind of a hard rubber. Uh, they're pretty simple, just basically a, a, a nylon cup with a little tiny flash hole in the end of it. And of course, we're going to have to, to plug that flash hole so that our, our powder doesn't come out. Now, one of the big issues I had was that these slip right into the chamber until you put a bullet in them. When you, when you put a bullet that's sized properly in it, it swells this thing up enough that they would not chamber. So I would ended up putting these in a lathe and, and polish them down to where uh, with, a, with a bullet loaded in them, they will actually chamber. And in that process, I went ahead and uh, slug the bore. And this was a good one to slug because it's basically a pristine bore. And I found a couple of interesting things. It's about 518 diameter, 518 thousandths, uh, which is about what they call for. And most of the, the uh, bullets are, are dropped at 518, or intended to. And the other thing that was interesting in looking at the slug is that it's a three groove, three land rifling and really wide, which is a little bit different than what I've run into in the past. But I think it really is a pretty good design. I'm sure that it's going to catch in the deep, deep grooves in it, like ten thousandths per groove. So that that's, uh, I think, it will do a good job of spinning a bullet, for sure. These bullets, I bought some from an outfit, and, and they were just kind of poor quality. So I ended up uh, casting my own this morning, and then I, I put some uh, lube of my own making, some beeswax and tallow lube in them. They turned out really good. They're, they're a 518 bullet, uh, 364, 000, or 364 grains. The only issue I had with them, they're, they're aluminum blocks, and if you've ever cast with aluminum blocks, it's really hard to keep your blocks uh, hot enough all the time, so you don't get a, a real consistent high quality bullet. Okay, so here we're We'll go through the process. We'll just load one of them because, well, it'd be pretty boring to watch loading more than one. Um, but anyway, like I said, we have to plug this little flash hole. And the, the easiest way that I found to do it is 
I've just got some cigarette paper here that I used to make uh, Sharps paper cartridges for 1859 Sharps. And just a, a hole punch here. And we'll punch out a piece there. And oh, we got a hanging chad there. <laughs> and let's see, then I just drop it in there and kind of push it around a little bit and it drops down to the bottom and there we go. And what I found is with these bullets, through a little trial and error, I, I settled on 38 grains of 2F black powder and that lets us set that bullet right down onto the, the powder, compress it just a little bit and it, and it comes up really nice in the chamber. So I'll go ahead, I don't have a drop tube set up for this so I just put a funnel in here like this and then I'll drop it from as high as I can and not spill it all over the place. Okay, and we'll open that up, make sure we got everything out of it. Tap it a few times and kind of um, work it down. And then this is the, the real easy part. Putting the, the bullet in and seating it properly. And we just push it down like that, and there we're done. So it's, you can see it would be pretty easy to, to load these cartridges out in the field. All right, we'll go ahead and get the rest of these loaded up, and we'll head back out and do some shooting. Of course, since we've got to clean up the black powder residue out of this old girl, we might as well get our money's worth while we're here and take a few more shots. Besides, this is great fun. We'll hit that jug right up front. Remember, I had to aim really low. These things shoot real high up close. Oh, there we go. Kind of have to think about it. It just loads a whole lot different than anything I've ever done before. That one was a little stiff getting in there. Okay, let's see if we can't hit some steel now. Oh, hey, two with one shot. I got that jug up on there. <laughs> Let's see. Again, kind of have to think about the process. Okay, we'll go ahead and hit that other jug since I already killed that one. Oh, that one died really good. <laughs> Once they've been fired, then they, they shrink back down a little bit and they're, they're easy to uh, pull out of there. Okay, better get that other steel. I can see how frustrating it would be in the heat of battle trying to cap these things although I suspect you get pretty good at it after some practice <laughs> this thing just shoots wonderfully I mean I really didn't expect this kind of accuracy from this gun um, first time ever firing it and I can see where it's hitting on the steel uh, just a, a little above the center of it the windage is great on it it just shoots pretty high and you can imagine um, you know at distance if we're at it 100 yards that that maybe it needed to, to shoot that high I mean this isn't a real powerful cartridge and it's a, a pretty heavy projectile well I've got a few more saved here I think it well, maybe we ought to take a longer shot or two and just see how it does now just for an example of how much more difficult it would be to load a Smith carbine as opposed to a Sharps carbine if you're a mounted cavalryman. Here's a, a Sharps carbine. This one's been converted to 5070 centerfire, but it, it would load similarly. So we, we go to half cock, drop the breech, put our cartridge in, 
go to full cock and if you're using the pellet priming system you don't even have to to put a primer on or a cap on with the Smith carbine of course and and we're holding the reins in our left hand we'd have our reins in our left hand here then we'd split it here and of course this is extremely uncomfortable you'd want to turn your hand over holding on to the reins trying to control the horse um, put putting everything in turn our hand back over put it together and then go half cock then we're gonna have to grab a, a cap put on it go to full cock and then fire so you can see it's simpler with with the sharps and then of course the the Spencers became very very popular because they were a, a lever action they held, held seven metallic rimfire cartridges and of course just like some of the other lever actions that, that was much simpler than both the sharps or the Smith carbine it begs the question a little bit why Winchester didn't produce some uh, Henry carbines during the Civil War. I mean, the, the Spencer became the most popular among the cavalrymen, and, and of course, the Ordnance Department had a, a real bias against repeating rifles during the Civil War for infantry, but they were okay with them for the cavalry. So uh, there's a, an interesting opportunity that uh, we don't we don't see a bunch of Henry saddle ring carbines out there with military cartouches on them. Okay, so the wind's coming up now that I'm just getting set up, but we should be all right. I've got a jug up there at about, I paced it at about 80, 85 yards. It's right up under a big juniper tree, and I'm hoping that the ground will be dry enough that if or when I miss, I'll be able to see where it hit. This is just a wonderful little gun to shoot. I wasn't expecting this at all. Okay, so I think just aim right at the base of it and see what we do. And shot over the top of it. It shoots really high, even out at that range. Okay. Getting a little better at this. You can see the advantage of this type of a firearm over muzzle loaders that uh, were typically used during the Civil War. Okay, let's get this one. Right over the top again. Gonna have to aim even lower yet. Okay, here we go. Third time's a charmer, so they tell me. Oh, come on. Well, we scared the living daylights out of that jug, I can tell you that. Now I have to admit, when this beautiful old Smith carbine came into the shop, I was really excited to see a piece of history in this kind of condition. And then I was a little disappointed because I was just sure it had been unfired and I, I just couldn't bring myself to, to shoot it. But then got to looking at it a little closer, could see some residue around the nipple. Uh, all bets are off. She's been fired, so let's take her out and put her through her paces. Now, my good buddy can sign this gun and I have to I have to say a big thanks. He likes to remain anonymous, but uh, it was it's just so nice of him to, to let us go out and shoot a gun like this and, and bring you folks along for the ride. Now, if you're interested in the, the history of these, these carbines, I just kind of touched on the surface. Belaz over at the Cap and Ball channel, he's done a couple episodes on them, and then on his website, he's got a tremendous history of these, these old firearms and the cartridges as well. So check that out if you're interested in their history. Well, thanks for joining us today. I, I sure appreciate it. I uh, hope you had some fun today. I sure did. Until next time, happy trails from the Cinnabar.